Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called The City by Tom Lehman and Griffin Games. In The City, you're going to be basically doing a little bit of a drafting game in which you're going to have seven cards to start with, discarding two, and then utilizing the cards in your hand as currency as well as cards you're going to place on your tableau. You'll place a card down from your hand, discard cards from your hand equal to that card's cost, and everybody else will do the same thing simultaneously. Then whatever you have on the field is what you're going to do, whether it be drawing additional cards into your hand or gaining points. Every round is going to be the same way until somebody gets to 50 points or higher, which is usually about the 7th or 8th round. At that point, whoever has the most points over 50 is the winner of the game, The City. Alright, let's go ahead and show you what it looks like. So here we have the game, The City and everything included, except for one card. I'm missing the general structure for some reason, so I just went ahead and used a, a token or a shot glass in this case. Um, and basically what you're going to get in the game is tokens and cards. The cards are going to be one full deck, and the tokens are all going to look like this. This is like a, a spreadsheet of all the different tokens. There's different values of 2, 10, 1, 5, and then you have negative tokens as well. And then these are called survey tokens, which we'll talk about in a second. And the deck is going to consist of cards that are going to be basically be city types of cards, whether they be luxury homes or fairgrounds, construction crews, freeways, office parks, research centers, industrial parks, so on and so forth. Uh, there's a couple of rules regarding playing cards down, and the main one is uh, that I want to talk about is factory, construction crew, and the uh, the other guy that I don't have, the contractor. If you have the contractor out, you can't have either of these out, and if you have either of these out, you can't have him out. So that's kind of an important little thing. But these are going to go get shuffled into the deck just like all the rest of the cards. The contractor is actually going to be set aside in the game for one for every single player, Oops, <laughs> and players will be able to have the option to select that on their turn as opposed to playing a card down like they normally will, which I'll be explaining right now. In the game, every single player is going to get seven cards. So if we put out a two-player game, everybody, uh, each player is going to get seven cards, and there you go. And then they're going to be able to look at their hand. They're going to then go ahead and discard two cards. Generally, I would suggest discarding the two biggest cards in your hand because you probably won't be able to utilize them. Whenever you discard cards in your hand, you're going to uh, make sure that they're kind of spread out so they, it is separate from the deck because this game plays up to five players. And with that many players in the game, there's going to be a lot of cards discarded. When all the cards uh, fill up the discard pile, there's no cards left in the deck, you're going to shuffle the deck up with the discard pile and uh, form a new deck. So on your turn, it's pretty simple. You're going to choose any of the cards here in your hand and play one down face down simultaneously with everybody else. Let's go ahead and look at the makeup of a card. The first thing is how many cards from your hand must you discard in order to play this card face down and flip it up? These are symbols that will basically give you points or additional cards in the game based on uh, cards in your hand. So for instance, if this one was down, you would get uh, cards in your hand at the end of the, the round based on the number of shopping carts you have in play. So in this case, you have two. Um, that is what the symbols do. This is the title of the card. Sometimes it'll have a flavor text or a text in general that will tell you about the card and some maybe things you can and cannot do with them. These are how many points you get at the end of every single round and how many cards this card lets you draw at the end of every single round. Uh, so uh, if I want to, I can play that card for this player and then this player can look around and see what he wants to do. And uh, maybe he'll play this one here. At that, after that, you go ahead and flip over these cards and discard cards equal to the amount of cards it tells you to. In this case, that's two for this player. And in this case, that's two for this player. What cards do you want to discard? Let's go with the ones that are, of course, the most costing. After that, the next portion of the game is simply going ahead and looking at what you get. So in this case, this player gets one card and no points. And this player gets no points and one card equal to the number of shopping cards he has. Has. These are both separate tableaus. This is this one player's, so he just gets one card here. So both players end up getting a card. But this is kind of useful because the more shopping cards you get, the more cards you get to draw. This one is less, but it gives you more symbols. So now, once again, you can go ahead and choose any of these you want. If you don't want to play a card face down, there's two other options. You can play the general contractor, which is basically just going to give you no points and an additional draw, which looks kind of like this card with no symbols on it and no cost. Or you can have a survey token. Taking a survey token is interesting. You go ahead and take the survey token. You could draw cards from the deck. I think it's like five. And then put them into your hand and then discard four of them. So you're basically searching the deck for cards to help you out. But you may or may not have to do that. So for instance, in this case, I wouldn't have to. I could go ahead and play that card. And I think this player is able to as well. Uh, yeah, you can play this card right here. And then once again, you go ahead and flip them over. 
And uh, now you're going to go ahead and draw additional cards and gain extra points. Still 0-0 zero zero for this guy, still 0-0 zero zero for this guy. But now he gets to draw two cards plus one, which is three cards into his hand. So as you can see, he's starting to build his momentum. And this player, he's got one and then two cards he can draw into his hand. Now, at the beginning of the game, you're probably going to want to draw more cards than not. And some cards are going to be more value than others. Like this one's going to cost nine cards from your hand. And at the end of your turn, you can only have 12 cards in your hand. So you have to discard any of them past 12. But the highest cost card, I believe, is 11. Uh, this one's good because it gives you eight points every turn. And this one, it gives you one card every turn as well. And remember, the game ends at about round seven or eight when somebody's reached 50 victory points because they're going to be gaining them from points here. For instance, I could have played this card face down and uh, let's go ahead and pick another one here, uh, this one face down. And then uh, we go ahead and flip them over again, uh, discarding two for this one here. And this player is going to discard one. And now I can show you how the points work, which is probably the only thing left in the game I haven't shown you. Uh, this player would actually get one point for that. And then three shopping carts is going to score him three additional cards and one additional card from this. This player over here uh, shows all, all of these type of cards that have the symbol on them are going to cost one less. And also he's going to score one point there. And uh, he's going to get to draw cards equal number of fountains, which there are none. Plus, he gets to draw one plus two cards there. And that's the, how the game's going to work. These go into a pool, so uh, you're trying to get up to 50, and you continue playing. The last thing to note is at the top here, sometimes it'll say what it allows you to do. Uh, certain cards are not going to be able to be played unless you have certain things. So, for instance, par apartments will let you build schools, professional buildings, and strip malls. And that's basically the game. That's how you play the game of the city. All right, let's come up and talk about it. Okay, so do I have any caveats to the city? Mm, not really. I guess I could go into detail with the, the larger ones, like for instance, the subway system here is going to give you one point per fountain you have in your tableau. In addition, it'll give you one point for one other player's tableau of fountains that they have. So if Grant had three fountains on his side of the field and I had eight, I would score a total of... 11 points. Uh, but I couldn't also pick Cali. I'd have to pick one of the two. So generally I'd probably pick the one that has the higher. And it's costing 11. So basically I have to discard my entire hand at this point to be able to play a subway system. And then you have stuff like Central Park. Usually most of these that are only cost one are going to have maybe a symbol or two. Uh, maybe they'll have one point. Maybe they'll have, they'll have one card. Uh, so basically as you progress throughout the game, your tableau is going to get bigger. It reminds me kind of like uh, Town Builder Kufferden by uh, First Fish Games. And um, any other small town building style game, but in this one you're using your hand as currency and you're trying to basically build your city as quickly as possible and obviously the most important thing is to score those victory points. And you do feel like you're building a city throughout the entire game, which is really nice. It's a really quick game. Uh, it said, I think, 30 minutes on the box, but we played in a two-player game. It's like 10 minutes. It's real quick. There's only seven or eight rounds in this game. And uh, the first time I played this game, which is going to be weird, I guess, I was like, am I doing this right? Because I just raffle stomped. That was, we were done and I had like 70 or 80 points. And I'm like, I thought, I thought it was gonna be thicker, but it's not. It's actually pretty quick, pretty simple to learn, pretty easy to understand game. And it works pretty much, you can pretty much play this with anybody. This is what I would call a filler game, but it has strategy in it as much as any other deck builder would have, or not deck builder, sorry, uh, any other uh, drafting game would have like dungeon draft and whatnot. The only difference is you're gonna be drafting from the same stack of cards as opposed to drafting from uh, your opponent's hand and then back to your hand and back and forth. I really enjoy this game. The artwork is nice. Uh, this game has been, I think this is a reprint of the game from like Germany or something like that and so it's it, it's good they specifically picked this game because it was going to be a lot of fun and it obviously it obviously is for me specifically uh two to five players got to play this two three and four players and I enjoyed it profusely throughout all of them of course with more players comes a little bit more analysis paralysis but if you're interested in a game like this you're going to enjoy this game. It's something worth trying and picking up or, or at least checking out to see if it's something you like. We'll probably play this live at some point because it's so quick and so easy that I think it'd be worth people seeing exactly how it works to uh, get feel as if they like it or not. But for me, excellent little game. The city is one I'll enjoy for quite some time. I'm going to keep this in my collection for sure.